This is one of my favorites. Um, it's kind of the one that got me into children's picture books in the first place. It's called Nobody Owns the Moon. Uh, and it is about the highly relatable topic of um, seeing a small independent piece of theater that uh, is very watchable. Uh, let's, let's try this. The fox is one of the only wild creatures in the world that can successfully make a life for itself in cities. This is because it is quick-witted and able to eat a variety of foods. Other creatures can live in cities, but often with limited success, especially when compared with the fox. One fox who lives successfully in the city is Clive Prendergast. Clive Prendergast is the name he gave himself to fit better into his city world. His real name can only be pronounced by foxes. Clive lives in a small one-room apartment in a busy part of town. By day, Clive works in a factory. He doesn't know what is made there. He just puts the same two parts together over and over. By night, Clive gets up to more foxy things. He likes to slink about his streets and alleyways, sniffing out odds and ends among the street stalls and other interesting going-ons. One time, he saw a dancing bear. Clive keeps pretty much to himself, but he does have a friend or two. He probably sees his friend Humphrey the most. Humphrey's a donkey. He's one of those creatures that live in cities with less success than foxes. Humphrey doesn't always have a fixed address. He's had the odd job, but he hasn't kept it for long. His most recent job was as a piano removalist. Clive often seeks out Humphrey on his days off or his nights off. He likes Humphrey. One day, Clive went looking for his friend. He found him beneath a statue of a great conqueror. Clive noticed that Humphrey looked a little worse for wear, like he hadn't eaten fresh food for some time or had a good sleep. It was then that Clive noticed a little blue envelope. It was among Humphrey's things that he kept in an old tote bag. Where'd you get that, Humphrey? Clive asked, pointing at the special looking envelope. I found it in the gutter. The paper looked nice. Clive whisked it out of the bag and looked more closely. You like it too? asked Humphrey. I was going to eat it, but if you're hungry, Clive, it's yours. Well, not so fast, Humphrey. This is no ordinary envelope. There are two tickets to the theatre inside, and the show's tonight. Is that so? And I say we go, said Clive. Gosh, said Humphrey. That night, Humphrey and Clive attended the premiere of Nobody Owns the Moon, the latest play by the city's most celebrated playwright. They enjoyed the delicious hors d'oeuvres and the marvelous punch that was served in the theater's glittering foyer beforehand. Then they were ushered to the luxurious dress circle seats where they could see absolutely everything. Soon, they were swept along by the sheer brilliance of Nobody Owns the Moon. In all the right places, they laughed and sighed, and as it neared its bittersweet ending, Humphrey wept. Afterwards, they found that their tickets entitled them to a hot beverage of their choice and a large slice of cake in the theater's elegant restaurant. Humphrey wept again. And that night, as Clive and Humphrey sauntered away off into the glimmering melee of lights and sounds that was their city at night, they said to each other, this is our town. And when they got to the corner where they'd go their separate ways, Humphrey gave Clive a big hug good night. The end. Thanks, y'all.